Welcome back to Midday Kentucky, everyone. Well, it's time we talk fire safety and the importance of smoke alarms with Lieutenant Jessica Bowman from the Lexington Fire Department. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much. Now, the reason I just want to get in here before Katie tries to deny anything. Um, Katie, the other night, had an issue. You know, she goes to sleep at 6 o'clock because she's up at 3. And her fire, <laughs> fire thing wouldn't stop beeping the fire detector mm -hmm. so she pops on Facebook I've changed the you, were, yeah. you you tried to take the battery out you tried to turn it off it wasn't working but people put some crazy suggestions smash it <laughs> rip it out of the wall <laughs> rip it out of the ceiling and the reason why I brought this up is because even Katie said the next day she had to end up calling the leasing office who had to replace it mm -hmm. are the batteries that are in those smoke detectors in the ceiling how long are those batteries meant to last? Well, it depends on what kind of battery you have, and we actually get a lot of calls about this in our hmm. office. So, See? Um, I knew so we needed to have it's not just already. you, yeah. Thank um, you, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> we are transitioning in our office over the last few years. We've moved to using lithium batteries. Lithium batteries have a 10-year lifespan. Likewise, smoke alarms have a 10-year lifespan, so it's a good oh, match. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, traditionally, years ago, people have always used alkaline batteries, and we right. recommend changing the battery um, in smoke alarms if it's an alkaline battery when the time changes. So it'd be twice a year. Um, oh, you're saying change the battery twice a year? Mm -hmm. I thought you meant it stays for 10 years, the battery. Well, if it's a lithium battery, it would. So there's what? two types of batteries. There's alkaline batteries and there's lithium batteries. Lithium batteries have a 10-year lifespan. And wow. so they're going to last longer. They're also a little more expensive. But if you have a home with vaulted ceilings, maybe it's just not easy yeah. to access the alarm or something. It's going to make more sense to uh, go ahead and put that battery in there. And I, I will mention that a lot of smoke alarms themselves have, there's a kind of a new way of making smoke alarms. We call them sealed alarms. Uh, what we've learned in the fire department is that um, when there's a need, when a need for a battery arises, people will take the battery out of their smoke alarm and they'll put it in their remote control or their, their kid's me. toy. So um, over the years, the fire service has adapted and they create these 10-year sealed alarms. And what that means is the, ba the battery is inside the alarm. You can't get to it. It's sealed inside. Ah. And uh, it's, it's, you still need to test the alarm monthly to make sure it's working okay. properly, but it's a pretty low maintenance alarm. You, you, you got yeah. that? Yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm going to take care of it. Um, <laughs> or I did already take care of it. But uh, let's talk about um, how many smoke alarms do we need in our oh, homes? Oh, that's a smart question. All right. So this is another thing that's changed over the decade. So it used to be that one alarm was considered enough. But depending on how large your house was, it was very possible that your one alarm was too far away from the sleeping areas to alert anyone of a fire. Um, the standard today is to have one alarm in every bedroom, one outside every sleeping area, and one on every floor of the home. So really? that could be, you know, on average we do about four alarms per home, but it could be as many as six or seven, just depending on the size of your home. I'm just trying to remember yeah. in my apartments back home whether I had to purchase the fire alarms or they're part of the building that get given to you. Do you purchase fire alarms here it in America? It depends on the age of your home. New construction generally has um, smoke alarms hardwired into the home. That means they're, they're wired into the electricity of your home, they're interconnected, they talk to each other. So if a fire developed in one part of the house, you would hear it no matter where you were in the house. Oh, wow. Yeah, because those alarms talk to each other. But older construction, you know, my house was built in the 60s. We had to install our alarms ourselves. Each individual huh. alarm. Mm -hmm. Well, before, before we wrap it up, we always like to give people tips to stay safe at home. Yeah. And I was kind of wondering, what is the most common cause of a fire inside of a residence? Yeah. So cooking fires are the okay. most common cause of fire. So um, between you know 6 and 8 p.m. in the evening, that is when we see the most fires in a home uh, related to cooking. So to reduce your risk, we, we encourage people not to cook when they're tired or distracted. You know, people multitask a lot. We have kids, we have phones, we have this mm -hmm. and that. Um, make sure you're setting timers. Make sure you stand by your pan, so to speak, that you're not leaving it alone. Um, also, turning your, your pot and pan handles in so they don't get knocked off and things That's like that. That's a good idea. I yeah. forget to do that sometimes. Well, thank you yeah. for coming. We thank really you for having me. We appreciate it. Out. More information about Lexington Fire Department. Give them a buzzer and say that you heard Katie and Troy's conversation about <laughs> fire alarms. Please That's do. super important. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Katie, what's coming up, Well, my stay friend? with us after the break. We are back in the kitchen with Allison Davis. She's making a bread pudding recipe. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. But first, here's more from Olivia Faith.